But this morning we're going to talk about the cost of freedom and really what it's all about. Um, and first of all, I'd like to look at it as uh, our freedom as a gift from God. Hallelujah. Right? God gives us so many amazing yeah. gifts throughout the Word of God. You can see them laid out piece by piece by piece. Even in the very beginning, He gave us life. <laughs> right? And he gave, them, he gave Adam and Eve the freedom to uh, eat from any tree in the garden. He gave them freedom to name all the animals. I'm amazed at the names of the animals they came up with. You know? um, he gave them all kinds of freedoms. From the very beginning, God wanted us to understand that he created us here on this earth to be free. Yeah. To live and to walk in that freedom. And the thing is, is sometimes if we don't understand the cost that went into all that, we kind of take it for granted. You know, so many times I thought about, like, for instance, we griped so much. We had so many times of griping because, um, you know, because they took prayer out of schools. And uh, a lot of times I started to think about it. I was like, how many times were we praying before they took prayer out of schools? <laughs> you know, how many times were we taking advantage of the freedoms that we did have? Who's and, in the home? Do what? Who's praying in the home? Exactly. Who's praying in the home? And so we have to understand that God has given us freedom for a reason. And the story that I want to kind of line this up with this morning is the story of the Israelites, right? We all, uh, we've heard about the story of the Israelites, how God had promised to give them the promised land, right? A land flowing with milk and honey, amazing and wonderful place, right? Um, in this land of promise. So let's look at Exodus chapter 6, verse 8. So Exodus ch chapter 6, verse 8 says, And I will bring you into the land which I swore to give to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and I will give to you as a heritage. I am the Lord. I like that. Don't you? Because what does it say? It says, I will give it to you. A free gift, right? That God is giving to us. And what's interesting is um, it's a gift that he didn't give just at that moment, but he had promised them for a long time. He said, down through the ages, I have promises to Abraham. I continue to promise it to Isaac. I continue to promise to Jacob. Now, they didn't see it in their time frame, but you see what was happening here. He was building into them the understanding that the fact that they were going to be free. They were going to have this free gift offered to them, and it, but it took something from them, okay? So, um, second point is freedom will require something from us, okay? Um, so many times we think that if we get a free gift, that um, it's not going to cost us anything. But here's what I want to think about. Okay, so if I was to take, and sadly I have no money, so I can't take out a dollar bill and show it to you, uh, but if I had a $100 bill here, and I said, this is free to anybody, what, it, what would it require from me? Getting up and getting it, right? Somebody would have to run up here and grab it uh, from my hand. And so it's a free gift, but it requires something on our part. And so I was looking at that because, you know, um, even freedom, even things that are given to us require something from us. That's right. And I looked at, and I don't know how many of you like this movie, but I love the movie Braveheart. I am a Braveheart fan. Um, I got to, we actually got to hear the speak of the, uh, the uh, producer of the movie. Um, at a conference we went to, a Catalyst conference we went to in Georgia. And uh, it was really neat to listen to the mindset and everything. But um, I want to set this scene up real quick. We're going to show a video clip. But I want to set this up. Basically what was going on here is uh, Scotland, okay? Scotland was wanting to be free from the tyranny that was coming down on top of them um, from their English, you know, counterparts. And so uh, we're looking at this, and they have been downtrodden. They have been beaten. I mean, everything has been taken away from them. Their land, everything has been taken away. And uh, so they are uh, trying to rally together to do something about it, okay? And uh, to release themselves from the bondage. So, here we go. Oh, I'm with the boss. And I see a whole army of my country here in defiance of tyranny. You've come to fight as free men. The free men you are. What will you do without freedom? Will you fight? Fight and you may die. 
That's right. He's going to pre-defeat the enemy. That's right. Yes. Hallelujah. Yeah. Prepare the way. So you have to walk in and just go in there. You know, it's, I, I'm trying to think of a... I was watching a movie the other night, and uh, like they went into the thing, and the enemy was so scared that they literally like tapped him on the shoulder and they fell over. That's, That's the kind of thing I get. I kind of almost get this picture in my mind, like he's gone and already done all this stuff, and all you have to do is like pawn pieces and just knock him over. <coughs> you know, he's already done all the hard work. Yep. But we have to go and possess this. We have to walk in. So I can only imagine, you know, and of course we know the story of the children of Israel, how it took them a long time to get to that point. But in the end, I'm thinking about it. And they come to so many things in their way. The first thing, first and foremost, is the fact that between them and where they have to go is a giant river. Mm -hmm. A giant river. In fact, according to the scripture, it says that it was during the flooding season. So it was bigger than normal. You know, so the water was higher than ever. And they had to cross this river, right? And I love the story, and I didn't include it in here, but I love the story because it talks about that they went, had the uh, priest go before them, carrying the ark. And as they began to walk across the water, it began to dry up. Yes. And it began to held back, right? right? It's like God was holding back the water, and they walked out. And so the children of Israel got to walk across on dry land. Praise yes. God. And then immediately after they walked to the other side, they said, okay, now priest, come on. The priest walked out and immediately it came back again. Yes. What an amazing thing, right, to happen. Yes. But they had to what? They had to walk across. Because I'm sure it freaked them out. I'm sure it made them nervous. But they had to walk across. <laughs> so we have to understand that we're given freedom as a gift from God. Uh -huh. yes. But then we have to understand that the freedom is going to require something from us. Okay. You know? I love it. And in fact, if you understand that at Christmas, what? They give you gifts, but you have to unwrap it. Mm -hmm. And if you're some people's relatives, you have to really unwrap it. <laughs> you know, how many of y'all have got those gifts where they like put a gift inside of another oh, gift? You yeah. Know, yeah. Of yeah. That kind of gift gets a little bit old. But, uh, but anyway, so it requires something from them, okay? Um, so it's a gift from God. It requires something from them. Sometimes it calls us to action. And then sometimes it just causes us to change our attitude and our mindset so that we can wrap a hold of what God has for us. And then thirdly, freedom, what will you do with it? It's there, it's available. You understand now that there's a little bit of a cost involved. It may cost you some energy. It may cost you some, you know, some sacrificial acts. It's wonderful and amazing, and the none of the stuff you're giving up is anywhere comparable to what you're about to get, but you may have to do that. Mm -hmm. And so, what are you going to do with it? Um, another thing from Braveheart, I love it, says, uh, William Wallace, they talked about that, you know, we're going to die, we're going to die, we're going to die. He goes, you know what? Every man dies, but not every man really lives. That's right. That's right. And that's a powerful statement, right? Because of the fact that we understand that, yes, we're all going to die at some point. But what's the difference between us as Christians, children of God, and those who have not found Christ yet? Is the fact that we have the ability to live a life of freedom. Yes. Right. Right? Yes. And that's the call that we make to others. So, I thought it was interesting. So what will you do for it? Okay. So there's a couple of things we can do. So the first thing that I like to look at is, in, uh, is that they prepare for battle. Okay. So let's look at this. So you prepare for battle. You get the big old sword out, right? So we prepare for battle. Um, I thought it was interesting because in uh, when the when I was talking about how the children of Israel walked across the Jordan and um, they went in to uh, they knew they were going to take the land and everything like that. They actually did prepare for battle. It says that they had about uh, in Joshua chapter four verse thirteen. It says about forty thousand mm -hmm. prepared for war. Crossing over before the Lord for battle to the plains of Jericho. So they were prepared for battle, right? They were prepared for something. They knew that something was coming up soon. And so they got themselves ready for it. So sometimes we have to prepare for battle. Joshua 6.20, I love this. Because we have to understand that, the, um, that when they went across, the first battle that they came into was against Jericho. And in Jericho, and this is interesting, 
In verse 6, verse 20, y'all heard the story of Jericho, okay? So let me, let me line this up real quick for you. So Jericho is a giant city, I mean high walls. You talk about the high walls to heaven. This is a description of this city because the walls were so high, so well fortified. I mean, they weren't going to come down easy, you know? And of course, if they're in this fortified city and everything like that, they don't have to worry about enemies coming against them, okay? And so what's interesting is, uh, and hopefully we understand the story here, but instead of having them go and fight a battle... The Lord's going to go before him. Amen. He's fighting it for him, right? Amen. And so we hear that he tells them, he says, I want you to march around the city. You know, each day, march around the city. And do this for seven days. And on the seventh day, I want you to walk around seven times. So in this whole time, they're praising and worshiping God. You know, they're silent. But they understand that God is going before them. They're prepared. But God fights the battle. Yeah. Right. And I love it because in Joshua chapter 6, verse 20, it says, So the people shouted when the police, priest blew the trumpet. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Hallelujah. <laughs> then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. Yes. Isn't that cool? Yeah. That's just amazing because it's God showing through that I'm calling you to prepare yourselves for something, but I'm I'm going ahead of you. Yeah. I'm preparing a way. I'm knocking the walls down for you. Yeah. Isn't that just, that's so God. <laughs> In all that he is to do something like that, to call us to stand and prepare for battle, but go ahead and fight the battle for us so we don't have to do anything. Yeah. Except we're going to just take it. It's yours. And so I love the way he talks about that. But another thing we need to look at is, and what will you do with it, is you need to don't go back. Right? Don't go back. I thought it was interesting how the children of Israel had come out of slavery. Um, they had been chained in bondage yes. to serve, to be saved, Slaves. Yes. And then they had, God had called them out of that, brought them out of the city. They had walked away and were like, we'd rather be back there because at least we had some food to eat. At least we had, you know, a place to lay down our heads, all these kind of things. And they constantly were looking back at what they had back there. It wasn't as good as what was about to happen, but they were like, well, it's better than where we are now in the time of it requiring something. Interesting, isn't it? Paul said it best in Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. He said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, and do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Amen. We have to be careful because we have opportunities where God has granted us freedom. And we, we're so excited. We're like, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so excited. I got freedom. But then so many times we have to be careful because we walk right back into the same stuff and once again yes. get bound. Be battled up. Amen. And that's, it breaks God's heart because it's not what he wanted. He didn't want them to be bound again. He didn't want them to have to experience his pain again. He was giving them all these kind of opportunities. But we see along the way there were times when they went back to bondage, right? Yes. They went back at times to serving other gods. And they went back to just all these just different things that they weren't supposed to go back to. And so we have to be careful that when we're given freedom, once we've prepared to fight our battle, once we've done that, we have to make sure not to go back. Right. Yes. Don't go back. Don't go back. Always go forward. I love it because my dad, when he was, um, he was a bishop for Southwest Texas, um, and kind of like uh, Bishop uh, Rayburn is here, um, and he would have... Um, getaways for ministers. And as we would know, we would always call them retreats, right? And so, because they would be a retreat, he would always call them advances. He would call them minister advances, you know? Because he was like, I don't want to retreat. <laughs> I want us to get the energy to go on, you know, and not go backwards. And so that always kind of inspired me, you know, to realize that we're not going back, we're going forward, ever so more forward, Amen. because God leads and guides and directs our steps. 
Now, true, it may be easy to take some steps backwards because we know where that is. We don't always know what's in front of us, but we do know that God goes before us and prepares a way. Yes. So if he's done so many good oh, things in our lives, why would we think that he would fail to do that for us now? And then what will you do with it lastly? Serve others. Yes. Amen. So many times we think of freedom as an opportunity to be able to, uh, you know, so many people think of like freedom. Uh, like let's look at financial freedom. Oh, I would love to just have a windfall of opportunity. I don't know, some, you know, uh, publisher's clearinghouse came in for me. I got the big old check, you know. And I have financial freedom to just be able to buy all I want, do all I want, you know, just be able to have that freedom, right? And that's a lot of times as human beings what we think. But freedom requires something from us. And I was thinking about this the other day. Um, and I realized that I may not be ready for it, okay? <laughs> Uh, I told God the other day, I think I would be a good millionaire. You know, right? Come on. Because I, I don't like to spend a lot of money. You know, I always like to help out when I can. I love to give an offering. I love to give a tithe. Can you imagine a tithe on a million dollars? And so, um, but I started thinking about it and looking at it. And freedom gives me an opportunity to serve others. Hallelujah. How cool would that be? Cool. Yeah. For God to take care of all my needs so that I can meet the needs of others. Praise God. In the Word of God, it says He blesses you to be a blessing, right? Yes. He doesn't bless you to just be blessed. That's right. He blesses you to bless other people. In 1 Corinthians 9.19, it says... For though I am free from all men, I have made myself a servant to all that I might win the more. Right. Wow. 1 Peter 2.16 says, As free, yet not using liberty as a cloak for vice, but as a bondservant of God. I have so many times uh, talked to you about the fact that God set us free. Not free to just live right, but free to live however we choose to live. Because see, here's the thing we have to understand. When we're slaves to sin, that's all we, that's all we can do. Right. We're gonna, we're gonna, that's, all, that's all our only choice. But when we come to God, He gives us the opportunity to choose His way or go back. Right. I mean, what is it, what is it they always said? Uh, they said, uh, they said uh, try God because the devil will always take you back. <coughs> um, you know, and so we have to understand... That uh, we have a choice to that. And so it was being said here in the scripture though. That I don't want to use my freedom as an opportunity to be able to just do whatever I want to. But I want to once again be able to bless others. And serve others. So I have to understand. That when God frees me from something. It's not to just do what I want willy nilly. Whatever I want to do. But then I become a bond servant. Which, uh, if you understand bond servant, that means that you have made a choice to serve somebody for something. Okay? Um, and so they will have bond servants who will come to this country and who will um, work for, a, a, uh, who came to this country originally, that will work for their, like, uh, for their fare to come over to this country. Mm -hmm. um, and so they made themselves a servant. So here's what's interesting. So what's interesting is, is we get freed as slaves to sin. And then we have the opportunities to then serve God. Mm -hmm. Isn't that kind of cool? I mean, I just I, some of these things I just never think of that way. But it's amazing the thing that God gives us. So we have to understand that what are we going to do with it? Because God's made it available. But we have to prepare for battle. We have to get ourselves ready. Get ourselves in the Word of God. Yes. Right? Good, prepare right. ourselves. Yeah. Put on the oh, shoes of peace, the full armor of God. Uh -huh. You know, the blessed breastplate of righteousness. You know, um, just so many things that we have to get ready and prepare for. And we have to understand that once we've been given the freedom, we need to stop going back. Yes. Stop going back to the same junk. I was praying about that the other day. I did something really stupid that I was just like, God, be free from me. This. Why would I go back? I need to stop just doing these stupid things. And you just think in the stupid way that I think. Because you've given me so much more. 
And then lastly, I need to understand that freedom is an ability to serve others. Amen. Amen. I'll tell you, and, and, and God, you know, God may give me the opportunity for this or me. I don't know. Um, but I would love so much if money was not an object and I could just go and constantly be a help for others. You know, I would love that. And so every time I do get the opportunity to, I take advantage of it when I can. But I just thought how cool that would be. The cost of freedom. Um, do we really understand? So what I want to do is I want to look at these points again. But I want to apply it to um, make it more real to us in our time for what we're going through right now. Amen. The cost of freedom, if you'll notice even in the background, it's kind of subtle, but there's a cross there. The cost of freedom was that from the very beginning of time, God knew that he would have to prepare a way for salvation for us because he knew that we would fall. And so from the very beginning of time, God set up and provide, was ready to provide a gift for us. Now that gift cost a lot. Amen. He gave his only begotten son that we could be saved. Yes. And his son had to go through terrible, agonizing, horrible things. If you haven't seen The Passion of the Christ, watch The Passion of the Christ. It portrays it more real than it ever seen before. Um, but the stripe that he took on his back, the nail, the giant railroad looking spikes that uh -huh. went through his hands, uh, the ridicule, the shame, just everything that he had to go through for us. But it was a free gift from God. Number two, freedom will require something. It's going to require you to have a change of attitude. Realizing that you're not going to make it on your own. Realizing that you may feel free where you are, but you're not to the place where God has prepared for you. So yes, you may be free. Like William Wallace says, you may be free, you know, at this time. And, you know, but dying in your beds many years from now, will you be able to, willing to trade all those days from this day to that for one chance, just one chance to come back here and tell the devil that he may take our life, but he'll never take our freedom. Amen. Because if we understand salvation, it's a life here and a life eternal. Yes. Right? Yes. Paul said it best when he said, to live as Christ and to die as gain. Yes. Um, and then it's going to call us to action. It's going to cause us to do something about it. Right? Whether it be coming forward to an altar, whether it be sacrificing or laying down some things that we think are really important at this moment, yeah. that really don't amount to a hill of beans in the end. <clears throat> And uh, if you want to go ahead and come up. Uh, and then lastly, what are you going to do about it? What are you going to do about it? Are you going to prepare yourself for the time that it's going to take to walk from the pew where you're at to the front up here in front of all the other people realizing they may realize that you're broken well, if you haven't realized it yet, we're all broken. And coming up to an altar and preparing for battle against the enemy. But just remember, like the people, the Israelites of old, God's already fought the battle. Yes. Are you going to hold on to the freedom that you get and not go back? Don't look back. Don't look back. I sometimes think about Lot's wife when they were, uh, you know, when they were running them away from the city. Said, "Don't look back," and she looked back and turned to pull herself. Don't go back. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty by which Christ has made us free, because through salvation has made us free. And don't be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. <laughs> and then, lastly, be a servant to others. Freedom gives us the opportunity to be able to lead others and give them the same freedom that we have received.